Good morning. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Please stand. Glad you're all here. It's a beautiful day. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, full of compassion and mercy, and abounding in steadfast love. Amen. Trusting in Christ's great promise of forgiveness, let us now turn our hearts toward God in a moment of humble confession. Gracious God, you are our breath and our very life. We are the work of your hands, the children of your creation. We confess that we have often turned from you and sought our own path through life. Forgive us our offenses and cleanse us from proud thoughts and empty desires. By your grace, draw us near to you, that you may be our refuge and our strength. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God, who is so rich in mercy, loved us even while we were still far away and has given us new life through our Lord Jesus Christ. By grace, you have been saved. And in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, God now forgives you all your sins. Amen. Please rise and sing hymn 63 with us.
May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, with joy we celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from Acts. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. 
there was not a needy person among them. For as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. The word of the Lord. second reading is from verse John. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands. Concerning the word of life, this life was revealed, and we have seen it and testify to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and we do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess in our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John in the 20th chapter. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. 
After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of those nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. So it was a crazy, crazy week. Because uh, I say that because on Friday morning I got a call from uh, Doyle Funeral Home, and there was a family that had, at the last minute, changed their minds and decided they wanted clergy present at their at their funeral service that day. So um, I had nothing to do because I only work an hour a week. Everybody knows that. <laughs> so, you know, but but I, you know, I always say yes because it's important. You know, it's an important thing. Um, so, it, because I didn't get a chance to talk to the family or anything in, in this particular case, the only information I had to go on was at the funeral home in the room with the pictures they had set up. So I had a, a minute or two while Tim was introducing me to look at all those photographs and survey them and, and try to get a grasp of this person's life, you know. And it's, it's so beautiful how families take time to go through you know, their old photographs and create these wonderful storyboards of their loved ones over time. Um, but, you know, it's, it's true. No matter, no matter how many hundreds or thousands of pictures you post on an easel, it doesn't really even begin to scratch the surface of who these folks really were, you know. And you'll hear her name when we do our prayers of intercession. Um, and it gets even harder now with, with you know, with cell phones. Um, I, I think I have 50 or 60,000 pictures just on, my, on this phone, this device. Forget about the other devices I own. And I, I, heard, I heard this morning an interesting fact, a factoid. I, you can fact check this later, all you streamers. You can Google it while you're home. But I heard this morning that more pictures are taken every day now than were taken in the entire history of the world before cell phones combined. And I think it's mostly me, I'm just saying, but, <laughs> but you know, it's, I get it that nobody expects the whole story to be told. It's only a, a snapshot of a complex and beautiful life. And we all know that, you know, in that room, we all know all that. So now I'm going back to the reason I say this, because we're going back to this first week after Easter, um, you know, in the days and the weeks and the years after this very first Easter Sunday last week, um, people wanted to recount the times they spent with Jesus while he was here on earth. And they knew they needed to sift through a lifetime of memories and write down the few snapshots that would capture the essence of his ministry. Because they didn't have, you know, pictures. They, they, they didn't have ways to write a lot of stuff. I mean, resources were scarce. They didn't you know, you had to write on, on scrolls, and, and 
So it took a long time. It was a painstaking process. They had to be very careful what they chose so that the things they wanted other people to really remember and relate to had to be like the most significant experiences they could draw upon. And you hear it in the last verse of today's gospel where, where John's gospel notes, Jesus performed many other signs which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you might come to believe. So by, by his own admission, John's gospel is just a snapshot, a tiny collection of pictures posted on a board. And, and, and by the way, that was, now I know last week you were talking about how Mark's gospel ended so abruptly. This was the original end of the gospel of John, too. All that stuff, you go home and look up John, there's like pages after this. That was all added 100, 150 years later. This was the original end of the gospel according to John. It's like, he did a lot of other things, but we picked the most important stuff so you could see. Now, and that's important because it's easy to forget that there were so many other things that Jesus did and said, you know, day in and day out, 24-7 for 33 years. So many other things, public and private. We know so little about his life. And it's easy to forget that the disciples and all the people around had a, a much deeper, fuller relationship with Jesus than we can ever know. You know, thousands and thousands of moments snapshots that we will never see. And actually, John's words tell us something hugely important about the depth and the scope of God and the Word of God. So yes, as Lutherans, we say Jesus is the Word of God. The Bible is the written Word of God, the cradle into which he was laid. And everything in the Bible is the Word of God. But the problem is, the Bible isn't the whole Word of God. John's Gospel just told us that. There's so much more that we don't have. You know, most of it was destroyed when they tried to eradicate Christianity. It was burned, you know, lost. Um, you know, they copied what they could copy, but imagine how much it was. And what we're holding in our, in our Bible is just a tiny snapshot of God and of all there was and of all there is. But maybe that's okay, because John's Gospel implies that there is something more important than just the facts. You know, there's something more important than endless videos capturing every single second of Jesus' life, you know, or your life. I mean, how many of you have more than one kid? You know, the first kid, 18 billion pictures. Second kid, maybe two, right? <laughs> I mean, Willie, if you're watching, I'm sorry. <laughs> But literally, I have like 10 pictures of Willie, and I have, I have like books full of pictures of Wally. So, but you know, and it all you do is spend your whole, the first kid of the video, you're taking videos of everything he does. You know, oh look, he's snoring, let's take a video, right? Um, or if you're a cat person or a dog person, you have, you know, everything the dog does is on video somewhere, right? So, but John is saying, look, it's not important that you know everything. It's not important that you know every second, right? And, and then I, as I was thinking of all of that in this last line of John's Gospel, I remembered something Maya Angelou said. Um, and she said, I don't know when or where, but she said, I have learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. You know, when I was finished with the funeral, um, I took one more look at the boards because I didn't have much time, and I had listened to some stories, you know, and, and, and heard some, some great and funny recounting of, of her life. And then as I was walking out, somebody, I don't know who it was, he said, hold on, Pastor, you have to look at that one picture that is down on the table by the lily. And I hadn't seen that one yet. And he said, you have to look at that before you go. And I took one look at that picture and I said, ah, now I get it, <laughs> right? The, that one picture somehow encapsulated her and her husband. It was the picture of her husband, actually, who had already passed away. Um, that one picture said it all. And now I understood how everyone felt about, you know, 
Look, Thomas needed evidence, understood. But when Jesus said, blessed are those who have not seen yet believe, what he meant was, what you need, Thomas, is to learn how to feel this, not just, you know, identify. You have to learn to feel who I am. And so does everybody else. Our scriptures are not meant to be anything else but snapshots of the Spirit, not designed to retrace the entirety of God, but to describe the essence of God, to describe the experience of the relationship with God. It is not everything there is, and it's not supposed to be. But the question is, how do you feel about God? Thomas had to figure that out, and he, he didn't figure it out, and, and it took the disciples a long time to figure out how they felt about all of this. How do you experience God in your daily life? And how will you convey that to others? Because Jesus says to the disciples, okay, I'm sending you out. With, to do what? Where? You know, how? Well, to feel When he says, love your neighbor as yourself, what he means is you should feel the same way about each other that God feels about you. And that is the challenge. But you know what? It's a lot easier to do than you think because your very life is your story and your love might just be the only snapshot that your neighbor needs. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Amen. out of our faith, the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's abundant mercy, let us offer prayers for a world in need. Gracious God, fill us with your spirit and renew our hearts in you. Strengthen us in your spirit that we may help others experience the same love that you have shown us. Lord, in your mercy. Celebrating God, we thank you for the love you have shared. Bless Mady and Chris Christie, who celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary yesterday. Lord, in your mercy. Healing God, we thank you for being a constant presence to all who are in need, especially for Judy and Lee Pagonas' grandson, Tatum Pagonas, Margot Wilson, and Judy Lucas, who had surgery on Saturday. Guide us to offer friendship and care to all who are sick and suffering, especially for those whose names we lift up to you now, either silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy. Eternal God, we give you thanks for the saints who have gone before us, especially Bonnie Moran, and those whose names we lift up to you now, either with our lips or in our hearts. Richard, Michael. Renew our trust in your Easter promise that we live with joyful courage and compassion. Lord, in your mercy. And so it is into your hands, O Lord, that we commend these and all for whom we pray, trusting in your great mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Take some peace with each other. God's peace. God's peace to you. God's peace. God's peace be with you. Ah. All right, let's see. Well, there's a lot of announcements here. Um, oh, Adopt a Highway, April 20th. Meet at Burger King. That's the best place to meet. Um, Route 44 in Poughkeepsie, over there. Uh, we do appreciate your help. I mean, it's a, it's a, it should be a beautiful section of road, and um, hopefully nobody has you know, littered on it since we did this last, but you know they have. Um, you know, from Adams this way on Route 44. So. Please join Bob Dyke. You can sign up. There's a poster back there and a hard hat and a vest. You can see all the stuff you get to wear that day. Um, and like as I always say, you never know what you're going to find on the road. So <laughs> maybe we'll leave some stuff for you <laughs> just to see. So yeah, please please join us. And it's, it's actually a lot of fun. Um, and Sunday, the, the next day, after the 1030 worship service, the hospitality team is sponsoring a pizza lunch followed by a game of bunko. So, uh, you know, nothing better than pizza and just sitting playing a mindless game where you can win money. So that's pretty cool. I don't know, do you win money at bunko? I, how's it, oh, there's no money? Oh. You know, I, I got to tell you, I have to tell you this story. So before I came up here, I was the director of pastoral care at a nursing home in Smithtown. And we used to have a lot of people at worship service on Tuesday. 
And um, all of a sudden, the worship attendance like dwindled, like from week to week. All of a sudden, like nobody was coming. And we couldn't figure out why. And eventually, we had a meeting with the, the recreation department and discovered that they were playing um, some, I forget what game it was. It might have been Bunko, but they started playing for real money. <laughs> during the worship service. So everybody was, everybody was down there in the rec room playing this for real money. They never came to worship again. It was just crazy. Just saying. So good. But Bunko's fun. Pizza's fun. Um, and April 28th, I'm really excited about this because the bishop is coming to visit us. Uh, finally, he owed us one from COVID. He was supposed to be here the week we closed for COVID. So uh, finally, his schedule allows him to come up. So Bishop Eggensteiner will be visiting St. John's and presiding at worship. Um, well, I'll be presiding, but he'll be preaching and uh, on April 28th. So we'll have one service that day. All the 9 o'clock people will come here, and uh, we'll all be together, and then we're going to have a big luncheon upstairs afterwards. So please sign up. It's a great opportunity to meet him and ask all your questions and get to know him a little bit. He's an absolutely fantastic person and pastor and he's a great bishop too so uh, please sign up and and while you're while you're there uh so we can give our money and we can give blood that day too because there's a blood drive in the parking lot while the bishop is upstairs so um 10 of all you give pint wise goes to the synod right is that how that goes <laughs> no but but the, the 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 blood center is graciously offered to bring a trailer so they'll be outside in, a, in, their, in their mobile blood uh, bank. So you can go outside and then you can go upstairs and, and eat and feel better. So there's that. Also invite you to fill out blue connect cards in front of the pew. Let me know what's going on in your life. And uh, speaking of going on in your life, you've got something going on in your life. Um, Nemo Swart. I wonder what you're going to say today. Oh, I know what you're going to say today. There's only one word you need, right? <laughs> Donuts. Yes. Yes. Hello, everyone. <laughs> I'm Nathaniel Swart. I have been working towards getting my Eagle Scout uh, here at St. John's. I'm building flower gardens, a flower garden in the courtyard. And yesterday, I had my last fundraiser. It was Krispy Kreme Donuts. Sorry, I couldn't do it anymore. I know they're good. But that helped me reach my goal. So soon, hopefully very soon, I will order the materials and get Workdays going to build my project. So thank you for everyone who supported. And thank you for everyone who... Um, Donated. Donated. Yeah. And and who donated not with money, but with, like... Prayers. Yeah. Time. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Gotcha. But yeah, thank you, everyone. I just wanted to... Thank you, Nemo. ...share my thanks. So you, so you met... You raised all the money you needed. Oh, good. So I don't have to write you another check. Good. All right. <laughs>
Let us pray. O Lord our God, maker of all things, through your goodness you have these gifts. With them we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all you have made. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. And so with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, almighty and ever-living God. Mercy is everlasting, and your faithfulness endures from age to age. We give you thanks that you have gathered us into one through your Son, Jesus Christ, who reached out to heal the sick and the suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who, on the cross, opened his arms to all. Send now your Holy Spirit into each one of our hearts that we may receive our Lord with a living faith as he comes to us now in this, his Holy Supper. Amen. Amen. We give you thanks and praise, O Lord. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took the bread and he gave thanks. Then he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this and eat. This is my body, which will be given for you. Do this, he said, for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant, which will be poured out in my own blood for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do all of this, he said, for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out your Holy Spirit, Lord, that by this Holy Communion we may know the unity that we share with all of your people in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen gathered into one by that Holy Spirit, let us now boldly pray the way Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So now come to this table where all are truly welcomed home.
And now may the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen each of you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God, in all that you have made is good, and your love endures forever. Send your spirit with us now that we may be united and transformed through the healing power of this gift of life to serve you more fully by loving our neighbors more deeply through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. <coughs> may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace.
And remember, you are the body of Christ raised up for the world. So go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be.